Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go through everything you need to know about the brand new minigame Ogre Ousting and how to get yourself a shiny Munchlax in your copy of the Teal Mask. Now, as you progress through the main story of the Teal Mask, you're going to come across this very unique new minigame, the Ogre Ousting. You'll get a taste for it when you have to go in and play it for the very first time. And after you do, this does unlock this minigame. As well as this, you'll get your first reward from the game, which is the experience charm. Now, after unlocking the minigame, you can choose between two modes. These are a solo mode where you can test your own skills against the challenges, or you can go in and play as multiplayer mode where you can team up locally or online with all other players and working together to beat each stage. Now there are three different difficulties to the Ogre Ousting. There is the easy mode, there is normal mode and there is a hard mode. Now, by completing each mode it will unlock the subsequent mode after that so when you've defeated easy it will unlock normal and when you defeat normal it will finally unlock hard and they're the three modes that you're going to have access to for the rest of the game. The easy mode consists of three different stages that you're going to have to complete. The normal mode consists of six stages and the hard mode consists of 10 stages and completing each difficulty level yields various rewards including valuable items like that brand new item mochi the fresh start mochi Herba Mystica, Evolution Items, Candies, and Terror Shards. You do get additional rewards for completing each of the difficulty modes. Now, once you complete the easy mode, which is just three stages, you're going to be awarded an additional item of an air balloon and three nuggets. You complete the normal mode, you're going to get a brand new item, which is the fairy feather and a big nugget. And then, of course, once you've complete the hard mode, you will be rewarded with that shiny Munchlax. But before we go any further, I do want to have a look at this brand new item which is mochi there are seven mochis in total there is the health the muscle the resist the genius the clever and the swift all of these respected mochis are pretty much the equivalent of a vitamin or a vitamin item that will increase the specific stat point of a pokemon that it's related to by 10 evs every time you use one so the health is for hp the muscle is for attack resist is for defense Genius is all special attack. The clever is for special defense and the swift is for speed. And an additional mochi that you can get access to is the fresh start mochi. Whenever you use this on a Pokemon, you will actually remove all of that Pokemon's EVs that it's got and giving you a clean slate for you to re EV it. So as you can see here, if we use the fresh start mochi, just to give you an idea of how it works. And as you can see, we've used it on our Breloom here, which will then remove all of the EVs on this Breloom. It's got no EVs now, giving us a blank slate for us to re-EV it. But if we want to go back in and put those EVs back in that we originally had, we can now use the mochis instead of the vitamins that we were doing before. So you can see 26 mochis there and then 26 mochis in health. And that should give us 252 in its HP and in its attack stat, which should max it out. It's just a new method for us to EV train our Pokemon, remove the EVs to give us a blank slate if we need to. So we don't have so much reliance on the EV reducing berries that we've had before, like the Pomeb, Kelpsy, Qualot, Honju, Grepa, and Tomato. We can just use that fresh start mochi that is only accessible through this new mini game, the Ogre Ousting. So these are some of the rewards that you're going to get for completing the different difficulty modes in Ogre Ousting. To get these items, your objective is to collect colored berries equivalent to the number of balloons you pop. For example, popping a red balloon yields a red berry. You must then place these berries collected on the matching color coded tables. Your berry carrying capacity is 30, so you can't carry any more berries than this. And when your bag is full, you need to return to the tables and deposit some berries before collecting any more. You'll be able to keep a good eye out on how full your bag is in the icon in the top right hand corner. Once the wheel is all lit up, you know you can no longer carry any more berries. And you'll also get a notification about this as well, saying to return to the tables to deposit berries before you can go out and collect any more by popping any more balloons. Now, there is a caveat to depositing berries on the tables because as soon as you do this, for the first time in any stage, enemy Pokemon will start making their way to the tables. These foes can range from Squovit, Greedent, Munchlax and Snorlax. The more berries you collect, the more Pokemon that will appear in the field and you'll receive notifications every time when a Pokemon approaches your tables and also a notification to say when these Pokemon are eating the berries on the tables that you've already deposited. Now, if left unchecked, they'll literally devour everything that you've put on the tables. 
So you have to be aware of where they are and try and scare them off using the roll function with your ride Pokemon, which you can do by pressing the right shoulder button on your controller. And just to give you an idea of the different amount of berries that can go missing from these Pokemon, if they do appear and you do leave them unchecked, you can see the Squover will only eat one berry at a time, so not too bad. And it won't leave the table until it's consumed 15 berries in total. Now Greedent will eat up to 10 berries at a time and it won't leave the table until it's eaten a total of 100 berries. Now Munchlax again will eat 20 berries per time and it won't leave the berry table until it's consumed 120 berries. And Snorlax, the worst of the lot, will consume 30 berries at a time and it won't leave the table until it's consumed at least 90 berries. So you can get an idea of if these Pokemon are left unchecked, they will literally clear out everything that you've collected so far. So a really important part of this mini game is making sure that you're checking these Pokemon when they do appear and scaring them off before they can eat any of the berries that you've collected. Now, each stage does last two minutes. So you've got two minutes to collect the required amount of berries that you are notified at the start of the round and then deposit those onto the tables. Once you've deposited the last berry required onto the table, you'll clear the round and you move on to the next stage. For the different difficulty modes, easy mode is definitely manageable solo. The maximum that you're going to need to go to in stage three, which is the final stage of this difficulty level, is 30. So you're just literally maxing out your bag. A big tip when you're playing through this solo is to not deposit berries until you have to. So if you have 30 berries to collect in total, that's all you need to do. Go out, collect the exact amount of berries that you need to collect and then deposit them all at the same time. If you're depositing red berries and then going back out into the field to collect your green ones, then you are going to deposit the red berries and those enemy Pokemon are going to start coming to your berry tables and you're going to have to make time to come back to scare them off to protect those red berries that you've already got. So it makes sense just to max out your bag when you can and deposit all your berries at the one time because by then you'll clear the round and also it gives you a little bit more time to go out if you need a few additional berries say you're in stage four where you need 40 berries if you're playing solo mode where you can go out and collect 10 more berries pop in 10 more balloons to come back where you're probably going to be able to beat the enemy Pokemon come to your tables so they don't eat too many berries before you can complete that round. Normal mode does pose some more challenges because especially stages five and six, especially if you're playing solo mode where you're going to have to collect 50 berries in total to complete stage five and you're going to have to collect 60 berries in total for stage six and you're going to get the start of the onslaught of Snorlax in stage six as well, which makes it even more difficult. And you're going to have to collect your bag capacity twice leaving the tables unchecked for a long period of time where you've got no cover to scare off the Pokemon or anything like that, where you're collecting an additional 30 berries. So it is very difficult to do, especially in the two minute timer that you've got. And if you are able to get through normal mode just on your own, the hard mode is going to notch it up even higher level because you're going to go through to stage 10 on the hard mode and in particular in solo mode, you're going to be collecting in stage 7, 70 berries, stage 8, 80 berries, 9 is 90 berries, and then stage 10 is 100 berries. So pretty much by that stage 10 solo, you're going to have to be reaching bag capacity three times over to get the berries that you need to complete that stage, which seems very, very difficult, especially when you're having to consider scaring off Pokemon from the berry tables along the way as well as collecting everything that you need in just those two minutes. When you go in and play multiplayer, the numbers that we've just looked at, you're just doubling them. So for stage one, instead of 10 berries that you would need, you're going to need 20 berries with multiplayer and so on and so on until you get to stage 10, where instead of 100 berries, you're going to need 200 berries collected by the party that you've got going out into the multiplayer field. Now, there are five different courses in total. Now, I would say you should just focus on these two courses for the most effective method of completing this there is the course here which has the river running through it and then there is this other one which is the field land course which kind of slopes down and slopes up from you but you've got a really good view of the surrounding area where you can map out routes and quickly see where the next balloon is that you're going to need to collect these courses also feature square berry tables which makes it a lot easier to defend them by using the raw function when you're centered in the middle of the square to scare off approaching pokemon from all four berry tables i would try and avoid the other courses as their linear berry table arrangement can 
be challenging to defend and the courses themselves do include obstacles that hinder quick returns to the tables because you're going to have the apple hills with the fences that make it very difficult you're going to have the crater course as well which hides pretty much seeing where any of the balloons are making it really hard to kind of map out a route and this slope course as well which just makes it very difficult to actually get back to the buried tables quickly and because they're in that linear pattern as well it makes them extremely difficult to defend now the earlier stages don't really require too much strategy you're gonna have an easy time going through from stage one to five really not really too many issues at all especially if you're playing multiplayer it's gonna be a bit of a breeze you're gonna have two minutes to collect everything that you want but after this, especially in the hard mode, it is going to get a bit more challenging. And I would say that you're probably going to have to do this in multiplayer mode to be able to complete this quite effectively. Soloing this seems a very, very difficult task at the moment. I'm sure someone will come up with a strategy to be able to do it. But right now, we're just going to concentrate on doing this in multiplayer mode with four players. Our teamwork in this is absolutely crucial. For our team, what we did was we all assigned each other an area of the map. We assigned ourselves one zone each and we all had our own route back to the berry tables. The first run, we'd always just collect whatever berries were in front of us on our route and then we'd deposit them back at the berry tables as quickly as possible. Now, on our team, we had a designated player who would sit in the middle and just use that raw function to protect our berry tables while the other three remaining players went out and collected the remaining berries that we needed. We were active on voice chat the entire time. So we were talking to each other and working out how many berries we needed and communicating what we currently had. And if we were spotting other berries that we needed, where there was a large amount, if we already had our bag full, so other players could kind of get to that area quickly pick them up and come back to the berry tables as quickly as possible. And this strategy seemed to work pretty well for us through most of our play. It was mainly about getting the course. As soon as we got one of the courses that we were pretty comfortable with, which is the river course, which is the one that we ended up finishing it on, we used this exact same strategy. And the one thing that I would say as well between rounds, when one stage finishes and you've cleared it, and the next stage is being set up and you're getting your totals for the next stage of how many berries you need, you can actually move around the field. So use this time to get as far away from the berry tables as possible. So you can then map your route where you're collecting berries on your first run back to the berry tables. This way, once you get back to the berry table pretty quickly, you should have 30 berries to start with. And if all four players do it, that's 120 berries to kind of kickstart what you need. One player will then stay in the middle of the berry table location using that roll function just to roll where any threats has come to the tables. While then the other three players go out into the field again, we all communicate on voice chat. We would say in what berries we were going to pick up from the next route that we did, what we were missing if we required any more and where these berries were if we had spotted them when we were out in the field so we could go back out for a third trip if we needed to and on that 10th stage you definitely need to go out on a third trip where you're going to have to collect those last few remaining berries what we generally tried to do as well was whoever was guarding the base was keeping account and letting all of the other players know exactly what number of berries we had left and what needed to be collected and we'd all call out what berries we were actually going to go for so whoever was roaring in the middle when we were all going out for that second run would tell us the exact amount of berries so we weren't having to look we were just paying attention to the course that we were going and the berries that we were keeping an eye out for and i feel like this is probably one of the more efficient ways of doing it we did try a method of assigning a single berry color to each of us but it made it a lot more difficult and a lot more clunky to kind of complete. Some other tips as well that can help speed this up. One of them is to avoid bumping into the berry tables when you're running, racing back to the berry tables. Try and stop before you land onto the berry table because if you bump into it, it's going to cost you valuable seconds. It can be quite costly later on in this stage. Optimize your gliding as well. If you are gliding with your ride Pokemon whenever, Try and hit the glide button as close to the ground as possible. This will kind of give you the momentum and carry your momentum on rather than kind of pull you up and slow you down a little bit. And of course, plan your route just before the next round to position yourself for swift berry collection. That is a huge important one. And once you have complete the hard mode, you will be gifted a shiny Munchlax with the crafty mark. Really nice final reward as well, which you have to really work hard for. 
So they are some strategies and tips on the Ogre ousting, how it works and what you can get from these games for doing it. Hope you found it useful. If you have, please drop a like. Do leave a comment down below as well and let me know how you've got on. If you've attempted the solo mode, how far you've managed to get. And do you think it's possible to do this solo mode on the hardest mode of the game as well? I would love to hear if anyone has completed already and props to you if you have. We'll definitely chip away at it over the next few weeks to see if we can get some success with it. But I would definitely recommend hopping online with, with other players and make sure you get in a, a, a group call. So coordinate your efforts. It is a lot of fun doing this game. I really like the mini game itself. It is difficult, but it is a lot of fun and the rewards are definitely worth getting in game. Do hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. Thanks for tuning in, friends. Take care of yourselves. Till next time. Take care. Bye-bye.